Welcome everyone, we were studying a model of uh, uh, stochastic control with imperfect state information and uh, the example we were considering was that of a machine repair problem. The problem was that uh, the machine could be in two possible states P and P bar uh, which, uh, which denoted a good state and a bad state. The control actions could we could we had two possible control actions one was to continue the operation the other was to stop and inspect the machine. At the, the, uh, the time axis was like this you there were 3 time uh, time periods so you have time period 0 time period uh, the time period starting from 0 then starting from 1 and then starting at 2. Now at the time period starting uh, at time period starting at 0 and time period starting at 1 we were we were being given uh, uh, the result of an inspection that was performed on the machine and the inspection told us whether uh, with some probability whether the machine was good or not. Okay, so there was uh, the it was a in, in, uh, it was a sort of an imperfect inspection. We had the option then to at every time to either continue the operation or to uh, stop and inspect the machine to get the get uh, get the correct state. And if it is broken, then ret return the machine to the to the uh, to the good state again. Now these were the probabilities that we calculated for uh, for for the transition. So xk plus 1 was the state at the next time step was we wrote that to be wk that is uh, uh, which and wk here is, is given in this particular form uh, given by this particular distrib probability distribution here. So you can go back to the previous lecture to see how we calculated that. We also had observation equations the observation equations were zk equal uh, were written as zk equal to vk and uh, they told us the probability with which we got a good result out of the inspection or a bad result out of the inspection given the given the state of the machine the total cost that we had was a sum of two stage wise cost recall that we were also told that the co the terminal cost is zero here so as a result we only have stage wise costs so st the the total cost is the sum of these two stage wise costs and the cost is a function of the state that you are in and the control action that you choose if you choose to inspect the machine and repair uh, stop and repair the machine you always incur a cost of 1 regardless of what the state of the machine is and if you if you continue the operation when the machine is in a good state you get you incur a cost of 0 whereas if you continue the operation when the machine is in a bad state you get a you have a cost of 2 units. The information that we had at each time was uh, I0 was the information at, uh, at the first time step and at that time we have only the result of the first inspection. So the, the whatever is the observation we get out of the first inspection is known to us at that time. Then at time 1 we have we have two inspections uh, that we have information of the ins the earlier inspection which is z0 and the new inspection which is z1 and we also have the information of the action we took at time 0 so given this we've had to choose policy uh, policy such that uh, policy mu0 mu1 where mu0 is a function of i0 mu1 is a function of i1 in order to minimize this total cost here Okay, the, uh, where the expectation here is now taken over the initial state x0 and the various sources of noise w0, w1, v0, v1. This was our problem formulation. All right. So now wh uh, what we will do is, is write out the dynamic programming equation for this particular problem. So remember for the dynamic programming equation for a, a problem with imperfect state information we start from time step n minus 1 rather than from time step n. We do not have the full state information at time step n. So we just absorb the, the terminal the, the, the value function or the cost to go at time step n into the into the time into the uh, dynamic programming equation at time step n minus 1. So let me write this now for a, a generic time step uh, k. So at a time step k we have j k of i k given as so we have two possible actions here we have uh, we, we have to minimize over the action set we have two possible actions the minim, uh, the actions are to continue and stop so the let me write out the cost that results from each of these actions and jk of ik is going to be the minimum of those two costs 
So, the minimum of these two terms. So, the first is the cost from continuing. So, the cost from continuing is is going to be remember we have to take the expected expected stage wise cost in the dynamic programming equation. So, in fact, if let us just recall the dynamic programming equations themselves. Here re remember there is an expectation here taken over x n minus 1 and w n minus 1. So, in the in the usual uh, in the in the dp equation with uh, where with perfect state information the expectation is taken only over the noise in the system. Whereas, here since we do not even know we, we only have some partial information which is i k about uh, about the system we have the state also is unknown to us. So, we need to take exp an expectation even over that that state while conditioning on i k. So, here we are conditioning on the information that we have and taking an expectation over this term. So, uh, to recall this was the expect therefore, what we get is the expectation over g k expectation over x k w k and z k plus 1 of the, the stage wise cost plus the cost to go right. So, that is what I will write out here in, uh, in our problem as well. So, first let us write out the, uh, the, the, um, uh, the expected cost from continuing. The expected cost from continuing is so the cost. So, it is going to be the cost from continuing when you are in state when the state is actually p that will be g of p comma c times the probability of uh, then times the probability of, of the state actually being p. Okay, so, the probability here is probability that x k is equal to p given the information i k and given that we are choosing an action c. So, let me write this out a little more neatly. So, probability that x k is equal to p given the information i k and given that we are choosing an action c plus a similar term like this. Now, the probability that x k is equal to p bar given the information and the control action and the cost that you incur when the state is in fact p bar. So, this here whatever I have written out here is the expected stage wise cost from taking an action c. So, in the dynamic programming equation you have the sum of the stage wise cost and the uh, cost to go. So, that that term here is is now this expectation expectation of j k plus 1 and remember j k plus 1 is a function of i k the inf the action we take c at at time k and the new observation z k plus 1. So, the expectation here is taken over since i k and c are fixed the expectation is taken only over z k plus 1. So, we are taking the um, so, so, this rather I should write this here by conditioning this on i k and c. So, we are choosing a minimum over these two terms. So, this is the, the minimum over two terms this is the first term here. So, this is therefore, let me write this explicitly this is the expected stage wise cost from action C given information ok, given the information i k and c, given that we you have information you have information i k and that you are taking action c all right. So, and the second is the expected cost to go given i k and c. So, this is therefore, the, uh, the, the term that comes up in the Bellman equation for with, uh, with action c. Then we have to take the minimum of these this term and another term which will come when we uh, when we take action s 
So, that is the action of stopping. So, that once again we will then have the probability that x k is p given the information i k and given that we are choosing an action s g of p comma s plus probability that x k is p bar given i k comma s and g of p bar comma s plus we again have this expectation j k plus 1 of i k s and z k plus 1 given the information and given that we are choosing an action s and again the expectation here is over z k plus 1 and now I can close my curly brackets. So, so I have written out once again this is the this here is the expectation of the stage wise cost from s given i k comma s and this here is the expected cost to go given i k comma s right. Uh, now, let us apply this for for uh, for various values of k. So, remember for k uh, we already have that uh, j 2 of i 2 okay, is equal to 0 that has been told to us because the terminal cost is actually 0 or in other words we can just simply write we can begin from uh, from k equal to 1 itself. So, let me write this for k equal to 1. So, if I have to write this for k equal to 1, I have j 1 of i 1 uh, that, that is to be written out using this using these terms and in that when I where I get in place of j 2 what I will really have here is is the is the terminal cost and terminal cost is actually equal to 0. Okay. So, let me write so we can take So, j 2 of i 2 is equal to 0 since terminal cost is 0. All right. So, now let us explicitly calculate these for various various values of k to begin with let us start with k equal to 1. So, k equal to 1 the information i 1 uh, remember we need to evaluate this for every value of i k and for every value of k. So, this has to be written for k equal to 0 comma 1 and for all for all values of i k. So, for k equal to 1 now let us write i 1 as the 3 components that we had which is the observation z 0 of time 0, observation z 1 of time 1 and the action u 0 that we take at time 0. Now, uh, uh, let us let us compute uh, compute j 1 of i 1 for each possible combination of these values. Remember z 0 and z 1 are observations. So, they can take 2 possible values uh, for uh, 2, 2 possible values that is these can these are both either good or bad and u 0 itself can take also 2 possible values which is to uh, continue or to stop and inspect. So, let us let us take uh, write the dp equation out then for each each of these possible values of of i 1. So, so for when so one so the first case here is i 1 equal to i 1 equal to g g s. So, when I write i 1 equal to g g s this would mean that z 0 is equal to g, z 1 is equal to g and u 0 is equal to u 0 is equal to s. Now, if you as we go into calculating this notice that the thing that we will need are these probabilities. We would require the probabilities we would require we are we already know these functions we know g of p comma c, g of p bar comma c and so on all of that is known to us through these expressions here. 
okay, it is known from here. So, what we, we need to compute now very carefully is, is, is this what is the probability of the state being x p given, given the information and so on. Okay, so, each of these probabilities need to be computed. So, uh, we also can uh, uh, try to understand what are, what are the costs we will incur uh, uh, in, in each of um, from, from these two from these two actions of continuing and stopping uh, because in this case we only have a stage wise cost. So, since we have since this term is 0 and we have only stage wise cost we can try to we can try to guess, guess what the what these terms are going to add up to. So, let us let us do that first so, before we actually compute these probabilities let us try to do that first. So, what is the what is the cost from action C? The cost of taking an action C is remember when we if you are if you now the cost of taking the action C remember if the state was a good state if the state if the machine was in a good state then this the cost of continuing the uh, machine in state uh, in uh, using the machine in state in the good state was 0. So, this here is 0 whereas this particular cost which is the cost of the machine be, uh, of running the machine in a bad state this cost is 2. So, th this first term therefore vanishes and all we are left with is actually just this term which is the probability that the machine is in a bad state given the inform uh, given the information and, and the action. The, uh, the other thing to note here is that the probability that the machine is in a bad state is uh, it does not actually depend on the action itself only uh, does not depend on the, on the fact that you have in fact chosen. Uh, uh, chosen the action C. So, really only thing that matters here is uh, so the prob the machine will is in a good state or bad state regardless uh, uh, regardless of the action that you choose to do on top of after, uh, you know uh, in that particular state. So, this is so this is independent of C. So, this this probability therefore, is just probability that x k is equal to p bar given i k. So, therefore, in summary the cost from C turns out to be just 2, 2 is, 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 is this term here, this is equal to 2, it is 2 times the probability that x k is, is equal to p bar given i 1, this is the cost from taking action C. Now, cost from taking action S, let us evaluate that as well. Now, if you are uh, if you are stopping and repairing, then regardless of what the true state of the machine is, we always incur a cost of one. That's what we had we had seen here. Remember, we, regardless of what the actual state of the machine is, uh, g of the cost of taking an act uh, of stopping and repairing is always one. So, as a result of that, this the uh, the the this term this term here simplifies dramatically because these this 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 g and this g are both 1. So, all you are doing is just adding up these two probabilities and they add up to 1. So, the cost of taking an action s is always equal to is just simply 1 right. So, that is because the j uh, the j 2 is is equal to 0. So, the the this the the term this term is 0 this term is 0. So, therefore, the so, therefore, what we are really comparing in the DP equation are these two costs, you are comparing this with this. Now, in order to do this more uh, uh, to make this comparison, we now need to as I said calculate these probabilities. So, we need to calculate the probability that x k is equal to p bar given, given the information and let us we will now do this for each value of i 1. So, in case 1 let us take i 1 equals equal to as I said good good and stop. So, good state in at time 1 at time 0 good state at time 1 and then uh, action chosen at time 0 is stop is to stop an exam. So, this this therefore, the probability that we are looking for which is x k equal to p bar uh, in a, actually this is not x k it is x 1 
here this is x1 equal to p bar given g g s this is we can write this by definition this is simply probability that x1 is equal to p bar and we took action uh, we took action uh, we, we had observation g g and we have taken action s now but we will be conditioning on s here and write this in this following way and the probability of g g given s so this is this just uh, is from the definition of a conditional probability so pro, so the probability on uh, uh, in the numerator is the probability that the state of the machine at time 1 is p bar and we have two both inspections the, the inspection at time 1 and at time 0 and time 1 have both resulted in a good rating and, and you have stopped and repaired the machine at time 0 right. So, let us let us work out these probabilities the, the denominator probability is the probability of getting the reading uh, uh, good and good given that you have stopped and repaired the machine at time uh, at time 0. Okay. So, let us evaluate the uh, 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 these terms here. So, the denominator here probability of getting good good uh, the observations good and good is uh, uh, it, it can be written in the following way. So, this this probability itself so let us write this out as so this is the probability that z0 is equal to good z1 is equal to good and u0 given u0 is equal to s probability that z0 is equal to good. So, we can we can write we can even uh, decompose this out even further. So, we can write this as the probability probability. So, we can uh, write uh, do the following here. So, remember these the observation that we get okay, in this case the whether whether we turn, whether the machine uh, whether we get an observation good or bad depends on the state of the machine does not depend on the action. So, what we can do is here in this case we can write out this this as, as a sum of two two terms. this and conditioned on x 0 equal and x 0 equal to p that means the state of the machine at time 0 was good uh, was was in the proper state plus a similar term with x 0 equal to p bar. Right. Now, here this becomes uh, fairly simple for us to work with. So, this tells us this is now the probability that uh, we can we can write this out in the following way. We have Now, when we work out these probabilities here, so we are talking of get probability of getting an observation g when uh, when the state is uh, when the state at, at time 0 when the state is al itself p that become that we can see is actually independent of what is happening uh, for uh, downstream. So, con conditioned on the state these these become independent. So, this is therefore, the probability that z 0 is equal to g given x 0 equal to p times the probability that z 1 equals g given z 0 is equal to p 
uh, sorry x 0 is equal to p and u 0 is equal to s times probability of x 0 equals p. plus a similar other term now we can we can compute this, uh, uh, we can calculate all of this uh, in uh, uh, eventually by plugging in each of the numbers that we have. So, we have for example, z probability that z uh, of observing a of getting a good observation when the machine is in a certain state that has that is given to us here that is that probability is um, uh, so probability of good given uh, probability that z 0 is equal to good given the that the machine is in a proper state that is equal to 3 4. The probability that the machine itself starts with a, in a proper state that probability is actually 2 thirds right. So, we can we can compute all of these things here and, and conclude that this quantity is actually 2 thirds times 3 fourth. So, this is the probability that you of of the machine start that the machine starts in a good state uh, in a proper state and you get an observation g at, ti uh, at time 1 plus the probability that the machine starts in a bad state and the obs and you get an observation good that is one third into one fourth. So, this gives us the probability of getting observation g at time 0. Now, given uh, now what uh, given this given the uh, uh, so this just tell this just computes the probability of getting observation g at time 0. Now, get the probability of getting observation g at time 1 can be computed, but that requires us uh, to to do a, uh, some additional work in, in addition uh, on top of this. So, there we need to also look at the probability that what the probability that the machine is uh, is in a certain state at time at time 1. So, th for that we require we need to go through this these probabilities here. The probabilities of that the machine transitions to a certain state when we are taking a certain action. So, since we are choosing an action u uh, action s here uh, since we are choosing an action s out here. So, in, in both of these terms we have conditioned on the state current state at time 0 and the action that you have chosen at time 0. So, from conditioning on this we can talk of the probability that of that the, that the state at time 1 is is, uh, is, is equal to uh, either p or p bar and then from there we can talk of the probability of the observation being good or bad at, ti at, uh, at, at, p, uh, at, at time 1. So, in summary let me actually erase this particular. So, I will just write out one particular term here. So, let us look at for example, this probability the probability that z 1 is good given x 0 is p and u 0 is s. This probability is, is probability that z 1 is good given x 1 is p and x 0 is equal to p and u 0 is equal to s times the probability that x 1 is equal to p given x 0 is equal to p and u 0 is equal to s plus the probability that z 1 is equal to g given x 1 is equal to p bar and x 0 is equal to p u 0 is equal to s times the probability that x 1 is equal to p bar x 0 is equal to p and u 0 is equal to s. Now, here we just we need to make this observation now that each of these each of these terms is in each of these terms 
the condition uh, given the state of the machine at time uh, at time 1 the past is independent is immaterial. So, these these two terms actually do not matter and we can now substitute substitute using uh, using the observation equations that we have using these using these equations we can substitute out here ok. So, uh, and, and then we have and these these uh, the, the, the these two terms that remain they can be computed from from these these two expressions here ok. So, so as, as a result of this we I will just uh, tell you what the final expression turns out to be we get P of G G S turns out to be actually just 2 by 3 times 3 by 4 plus 1 by 3 times 1 by 4 the whole square this becomes the uh, the denominator sorry p of g g we given s this becomes the denominator ok. We will now do the remaining calculations in a moment in the next lecture.